Support for Radio Friends comes from Rose Heart Hypnotherapy, serving Central Missouri since 2007. They specialize in pain management, pre and post medical procedures, fears, phobias, and increasing performance and success in every area of life. Athletes needing sports hypnosis to improve their ability will be pleased to know that Rose Heart Hypnotherapy specializes in neurofeedback and is the only certified OptiBrain train and golf partitioner in Missouri. Call Rose Heart Hypnotherapy at 888-604-9997 or visit mohyp.com and experience true success. Good morning and welcome to Radio Friends on Friday, March the 16th. I guess we could call it um, St. Patrick's Day Eve, yeah, St. right? St. Patrick's Eve. St. Patrick's Day Eve and we got Larry Brown with us. Good to have you here, Larry Brown. Thank you. Good to be here. And uh, with St. Patrick's Day just around mm-hmm. the corner, you have a special St. Patrick's Day story. Well, of course. What's it called? Letty. What's it called? Well, it's called the, uh, the Other Saint. Okay, so here is Larry Brown with a story about the other saint. Now, there is a woman whose popularity in Ireland rivals that of St. Patrick himself. She was known for uh, fertility of agriculture, restoring nature, miracles, helping the poor. And her name was Bridget, St. Bridget. And she was of the 5th century, same time period as St. Patrick. Well, there are two stories about her that are my favorite, and I want to share them, and then we'll talk a bit about her. Now, the first is that she and a group of sister nuns had approached the king of Linster asking for a piece of property to start a convent. And when they asked the king, well, the king laughed and said, "Ah." and she said, well, I just want simply a piece of land as large as my cloak. And the king, thinking, of course, that this was a joke, agreed. And she turned and had four of her sisters grab the corners of her cloak, and they ran in four different directions. And the cloak got larger and larger and larger until it was covering several acres. And the king said, what is this about? And Bridget said, my cloak is about taking all of your territory as punishment for your for your." stinginess with the poor and the king granted them the piece of property that they wanted for their convent and it is said that he became Christian and then commissioned the building of their monastery now the second story likened to the first there was a king who had invited a guest to come in and visit him in his hall. When the guest was arriving, saw a wild fox run into the hall. And assuming that it was a wild fox, killed it, not knowing that the king had taken that fox as his special pet and had trained it to do all sorts of tricks. Well, the king, in his anger, said to the man, you will be executed and your family will be sold into slavery. Well, Bridget, upon hearing of the ruthlessness of that penalty, got her chariot, was riding as fast as she could up toward the king's hall when a wild fox jumped into her chariot. Now, when Bridget came into the chambers and approached the king and was pleading for leniency for the man, the king said, well, I will grant him leniency if he can produce a fox as clever as the one that I'd trained as my pet. And at that point, Bridget released the fox from underneath her garments who came out and performed all of the tricks that the king's fox could have done. And the audience was amazed. Well, the king granted freedom to the man, sent him home, and his family was freed. And after they got back to Kildare, that wild fox left the king's courts for all of the noise and commotion went returning to the wild. And all of the king's riders and hounds could not capture it and made fools of them all. Well, perhaps these are legends, but who was the real Bridget? Well, she was born around 450 and lived to maybe 525, and she had been raised uh, in Celtic nobility. Her mother had her baptized because her mother was Christian, and but she was nurtured by a Druid priest 
she was trained to be what we might call today a warrior princess. But in her young adult life, she chose to enter uh, the convent as a nun because of Christianity that was beginning to sweep across Ireland due to St. Patrick. Well, it is said that she, upon her commissioning, got a special designation. For she and a group of nuns who were to be commissioned as nuns were to be consecrated by two older bishops, one of them St. Mel, who apparently in his age and inability to know exactly what was going on accidentally read a prayer of consecration for a bishop. And even though it was pointed out he made his error, he let it stand. So technically, Bridget became the first woman Roman Catholic bishop in Ireland. Well, she went on to to found monasteries and and churches uh, and and continued to to build up her reputation, stories of the miracles she performed. Uh, But she established that monastery uh, on the site was called Kildare or Kildara, the Church of the Oak, perhaps on an ancient Druid site. And the oak and that site lasted clear until the 10th century. Well, that monastery became famous for its letters and arts, one of those illuminated gospels of the Irish tradition, rivaling the Book of Kells. Although that book of Kildare was lost during the Protestant Reformation, it was last seen in the 12th century. Her monastery that she established was for both men and women. Well, she went on, it was recorded that miracles after miracles have been done in her name, hence she became a saint. It was reported that she was noted particularly for her rapport with nature. Two little things about that. That monastery she'd originally founded grew blueberries, and that monastery became known for its blueberry jam. So every time on St. Bridget's Day, they celebrate with using jam. And also the folding of little green crosses out of the green reeds known as the St. Bridget Cross. Well, St. Bridget uh, died 525 or so. Her remains were initially buried at Kildare Cathedral, but during the Viking invasion, her remains were moved, and she was buried with St. Patrick and St. Columba, the two most famous saints. And she became the other saint, the third of a triad of popular saints. One writer said there was a time in Ireland when everybody had a boy named Patrick and a daughter named Bridget. St. Bridget of Kildare. Ah, that's a good story. That's a good story. Uh, And it dates back? Well, this was 5th century, although her first biography was not written until the 7th century. And and as we know, that time period, the legends uh, accumulate. They kind of pick up a little bit here and there. There was a Celtic goddess named Bridget, and some say that maybe the two figures have combined and the stories have merged as one. But... Mm. There is the anyway, history it's and a, the it's legend. A good, it's a good story, a good story for St. Patrick's Day Eve. If, if you want more of Larry Brown's stories, they're available on CDs and DVDs, right? How do they get in touch uh, with you, Larry? At, at brownstory.com. Just brownstory.com, and uh, you'll be happy to mail them out. I would be doing, I'd be doing that for you. All right. You'll come back again, and happy St. Patrick's Day to you, Larry. Same to you. Okay. Out of time for today, Monday, the Magic Flute and Stevens College Fashion Show. If there's something you would like to hear or see, I would love to hear from you. Just drop me an email, pepperp at missouri.edu. Have yourself a good weekend. Bye-bye.